All right, so every time you come in, you need to do your setup about um, either your uh, either your simulator or your real device. You need to just run a quick test project so that it downloads all that stuff from behind the scenes. So that's what I've got. I've got the device running, and uh, now what we're going to do is get some work done for real. So this project that I worked with, if you... I just called it blank Cordova app one. If you had some sort of blank project, you can just go to file close solution. That was just to set up your environment so that all of the files are downloaded and you're ready to go. Today what we're going to do then is to create a real starting point project to start to get back to our CBDB project. We spent two days last week with the basic nuts and bolts of what Visual Studio is. So now we're going to create a real CBDB project and save it for real. And I will uh, point out several things along the way, a couple of pitfalls here and there that you might want to think about. So wherever you're at, let's make sure you've got you've closed the solution. You don't have to have any other project open. So file close solution. And then we'll go to file new project. Make sure it's a JavaScript project. It should be the only option because that's what the workload is installed on these computers. At the bottom, our project, we can call it CBDB. This is going to be the name, which can be changed later. This is going to be the name of the, of the app on the little icon, right? Right below the icon, that's going to be the name. So however you spell this is how it'll appear on the below the icon, which you can change. I'm going to spell it in the you know, the way that we do nowadays that we mix uppercase and lowercase to be cool. So mine's going to be called CBDB. Um, uh, solution name, same thing, doesn't matter. Location, that's what matters. The default is it's going to save into my documents folder. I want to save this to my flash drive. Some of you experienced last week that when you saved it to the documents or the desktop, and then at the end of the day tried to copy it to your flash drive, you got an error you reached one of the Windows limitations. Windows 7, at least, has a problem with long file names. A file name can be up to 256 characters long, including its full path. So there are subfolders within our project folder with a long name, and subfolders with another long name, and there's files in there with a really, really long name. So if you save it anywhere and try to move it around, you might get errors because then Windows can't understand a 300-character long name because it can only handle 256. What I'm getting at is I'm going to save this to my flash drive with the shortest name possible just to be safe. This has happened before, and this seems to be a solution for us. So on my flash drive, I'm going to my flash drive, and I have a folder for my projects. I might not still want to put it in a subfolder. I might want to put it at the root level of my flash drive. Yes, you might have some really nice organization or not, but I would say on the root level of the project is where you're going to save your work. So on my F drive, here I'll create a new folder, CBDB. And in this folder on my flash drive is where I will save my project. So notice here it says, you're going to save it to your F drive in CBD. <laughs> I think that's safer, because I would hate for you to do all of this work, then you move it off of your flash drive to another computer, and then the computer says, cannot copy a file, its file name is too long. And who knows which piece of the thousands of pieces of your app is not working, and you might have to start over or do something. So I would say, create just a short project folder on your flash drive uh, and then save it on your flash drive. I will be putting a copy of my work in the in the network folder at the end of the day. Uh, we'll be, I'll be doing that again for this month up until a point. So you will be able to get a copy of my work. But really also this project has so many subfolders and we really only work with the www folder it's going to be easier for you to only get a copy of my WW folder instead of the full folder. So I'll remind you about that a little bit later. Save it to your flash drive. This is going to be our real project now. You want to keep it. This is when it's nice to have a USB 3.0 flash drive, and even nicer if you've got a USB 3.0 enabled computer. Mine doesn't. 
but I think a lot of yours does. So plug your, if you've got a USB 3 drive, plug it into the blue port, which is USB 3, and therefore you'll have a, flat, a fast flash drive connected to a flat, fast port, and your data will transfer faster. So I've got this brand new project, this little kind of welcome screen, this overview, you can close it. You can always get back to it if you go back to Project Overview. In my case, because I've got small real estate here on the screen, I don't need this Properties panel for me. I can either unpin it or close it. I want to focus more on my folder tree and such. So any of these panels you can you can hide by clicking the pin, or you can close it with the uh, X. And any of these panels that you lose, you can get them back from the View menu. It's one of those there. Or you can go back to Window menu and reset your layout. We're going to set up a few things in our config XML file. We don't need to work very much with the config XML file except at the beginning of the project. And also it's a good idea one more time before we publish it to the App Store. So let's double click the config XML file. Tool set, nothing to change there. You can leave that. Common, common view. Okay, CBDB is the name of our project. If you want to call it anything else, you can change it. Start page, leave that alone. Default locale, leave that alone. Package name. So here, you want to put in a package name, a unique identifier for the project. I recommend something like com.yourlastname.cvdb. Don't do com.smith.cvdb, because when you try to publish this in the real app store later on for your final grade, it'll be rejected. Because if I have published first com.smith.cvdb, it'll reject yours because there already exists this version of CBDB at the App Store. So put your last name or make it up and uh, dot CBDB. So it's going to be some.com.net.biz.whatever, your last name, and then dot the name of the app. No spaces. So if you were calling your app my CBDB, that would be fine, but you cannot then call it down here my space CBDB. See, I get the little red X there. Version here, uh, what I like to do, what I recommend is, okay, you've got your main version number, minor version 1, and then build. I like to put the date on it. So today's 1010, uh, something like that. The point of this is uh, Eventually, we will finish the app. We will publish it probably on the second to the last week of the class next month. Then we'll also cover about version 2. We're going to add more things to the app, enough perhaps to release a version 2. So eventually, we'll talk about, well, we've upgraded to version 2. And in the meantime, maybe we're on, maybe we're on version 1.2.2017.10.12. Whatever. So that is a way to kind of keep track of the versions of your project. Your name. So you want to put your name there or the name of your business, your development firm, whatever. You don't have to ask permission. You know, you can be Smith Apps. Whatever. You're a developer. You can name this whatever you want. Change it later if you want. description. In your own words, or I'll put an example here, in your own words, what is this app? This is the CBDB app that we're eventually publishing. As I said, this app will be able to store comic books. It'll store uh, the title of the book, the picture, notes, and all of that. So how would you describe it in one simple sentence? What is this app? Later on, when we create a store listing, we will have space to write a bigger listing, a more enticing listing. But here, a little bit about what is the app. I'm going to write something like, the only app you'll need to keep track of your comic book collection. Later on, we'll have a lesson and talk about 
the ideas of marketing and selling yourself and all of that, selling your app, uh, either literally or figuratively. So marketing, you might have an amazing app, but if no one knows about it, uh, they're not going to download it, they're not going to make you rich 99 cents at a time. So later on we'll talk about, uh, you know, thinking like a marketer, thinking in terms about writing uh, enticing copy, which is the fancy word for text, and convincing people to download your app because it's, it's what, they, what they need and all of that. So the only app you'll need to keep track of your comic book collection, store, titles, years, uh, pictures, and notes for everything in your collection, for, ev for everything in your inventory, for everything in your library. You don't have to write this exactly, it doesn't matter, but this will be something we'll come back to later. As I said, you usually look at the config XML file when you first create the app, and then right before you're going to publish the app, because you might have to update the, the version number, you might then update this description, you might add or remove plugins when you're ready to publish for real, and um, at this point we'll have those items. Orientation. I want to lock the orientation of this app to be vertical. Right now it's going to be both landscape and portrait, the app will be able to rotate. But I want to, aesthetically and personally, I want this app to only be vertically vertical. If you want to make a version of it that goes sideways, that's great, that's fine. But I'm going to recommend here, uh, keep it a portrait. If you think about a lot of the apps you might use, Facebook, Instagram, you know, Gmail, whatever, a lot of them are automatically in portrait mode. Um, and a lot of people have automatically locked portrait orientation. This is again deciding on what kind of app you want and your aesthetic. So any one of these is fine. I'm going to keep it on portrait. Out of curiosity, someone locked it in landscape mode, and then yours was a portrait mode only application. What would happen? It would be a little awkward for them for a moment because if they lock theirs to landscape and yours is in portrait, they have to go to portrait mode. And just in in your app, they will be forced to be portrait mode, and vice versa. Full screen. Uh, okay, this is something again for you to decide. Full screen. At the moment, the default is no, meaning that when my app loads up, I'm still going to see a little bit of the title bar and such above on my app, where I've got the battery level and I've got my time and all of that. If you don't want that to be visible, you can put it yes. Full screen yes. Uh, you can decide how you want this, but think about apps that you've used. Is it ever confusing when you go to an app and suddenly everything's missing? Where's my back button? Where's my time? Where's my battery level? So uh, it's better to not confuse your uh, your visitors, your users. So I might think about, no, don't put it full screen. Um, use case scenario for full screen is often games. I want to use every millimeter of the screen to really show off my game, so I might put it on full screen. Domain access, don't worry about that at the moment. Go ahead and save at the top. And then we'll jump over to plugins. Later, eventually, we're going to use a few of these plugins, camera and such. The one I want to activate for the moment is console. There's an extra console plugin. We do have some basic console output built in. But if we activate this other extra console, we can get more feedback from the Visual Studio console when we test our projects. So select console and add it. It'll connect back to the Cordova website, download it and such. This is running off of my flash drive, so it will be a little slower. This is one of these conundrums. Running it off of your desktop is often going to be faster. But if these computers crash, you lost everything because these have deep freeze. And when the computers restart, it goes back to factory settings. So if you're running it on your flash drive, you're safer. If the computer crashes, your work is on your flash drive. But it's probably slower. I would recommend do it from your flash drive. I will live with the slowness. I don't want to lose my work. So every time you add a plugin, it makes your app a little slower to compile the first time. We don't need any of these other plugins yet. We'll be back to this later. Go ahead and save that.
Um, then uh, let's go over to the Android section. Okay, so version code, all of this, it would be nice if there were a link in here to take you directly to the Android, the developer.android website to see the exact documentation. It'd be nice to do that, but you can do that on your own, developer.android.com. Because some of this stuff, when you first look at it, you, I, I don't know what to fill in, and there's no real help that it gives you. Nothing pops up or any help, little bubble or anything. Unless you have a guide, it's a little confusing. Version code is a very important value to fill in here. We started off at 1. Every version that you upload to the App Store has to have a whole number, uh, sequential number. If I upload this to the App Store today, it's version code 1. It's the first version of my code. If I upload one, a copy of the code to the App Store next week, I must Incremented at least by one version.